when you do breathing squats, you have the bar on you for a very long time. Very long time. You're taking breaths, you're resting at the top, you're taking breaths, you're resting. When you're ready, you do some more, you rest some more, do some more, that kind of thing. What's so special about squats? Why don't we do that with everything else? Reading the Super Squats book, I learned that having the weight on top of you is half of the magic, really. You rest with the bar on top of you. You're resting, right? But you're really not resting because there is a force on top of you which you have to deal with. Why don't we do with everything else? I had that thought a few days ago. So then I did my push-ups from the bottom up. So I would do a set of one, a set of two, a set of three, a set of four. And I try to pause after each set. So for instance, set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would do without stopping, meaning I would rest at the top of the rep. I wouldn't get a knee, I wouldn't do anything like that. Still stay in the position at the top of the push-up and go again. And what happens? I get tired very, very quickly. That top position is not a resting position you quickly learn. Uh, you can't rest anything. Your triceps are engaged, serratus anterior is engaged, your core is engaged very much so. You have to be mindful of your lower back position so you're kind of doing a hollow body position at the top really. Whatever you want to do, you're not going to be resting. It basically cuts my reps down in half. And then it occurred to me, maybe it's not so much about the reps, but it's about the time I'm in that position on my hands. How long can you last? How long can you plank? Essentially, this is a plank on your hands. That's what this is. How long can you stay in that position? Because if your resting position, if your plank position, if your top position on the, on the push-up is not comfortable, it's going to set you back. So... On the bench press, for instance, you're repping it out, you're repping it out, and you think you're fatiguing because you're repping it out. Just unrack the bar and hold it there for as long as you, you can. Obviously, it adds a bit of an element to it when you're actually moving the bar in space. But I think there's a lot to be said about just holding the bar there. I haven't tried that, but I have tried push-ups now a few times. And not only is my, are my pecs on the map much more, my triceps are on the map much more, and for the first time now in a little while now, so it's been three days since I've last done push-ups, I had a sore serratus anterior. Because the serratus anterior, that punches muscle, you know, that's kind of like running along your ribs on the side, is primarily working to stabilize that shoulder joint, that whole, you know, scapula, that whole girdle, like, you know, that's being controlled by that. It's not sexy. It's not sexy because I know I can do way more push-ups if I don't stop at the top. Uh, but it gets the job done, man. So the other day I went from one all the way to uh, set uh, 27. Uh, and it takes a long time to do a 20, 27 push-ups. When you're banging the push-ups out really, really quickly, at least in the push-ups uh, realm, when you're banging them out quickly, you feel like you are, you know, Okay, I've got a minute and a half on my hands, and after that, no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to have to fail. That kind of deal. It's kind of like when you're squatting, and you're like, okay, I've got 60 seconds before I give out. Not because I'm moving the bar, because the bar's been on me for a minute. After that, I can't tolerate. And the central nervous system starts sending all these messages around the place, like your legs are fatigued, your core's fatigued. You know when your core is fatigued, you don't really know which muscle is fatigued, but your whole, like, from chin all the way to your pelvis, something's off. Like, you, you can't even, like, breathe properly. So that's the kind of sensation I was getting with the push-ups. It's like, yeah, I feel my, feel my, uh, my triceps, I feel my pecs, but also feel my, 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 my inside bits, like my core. Not specifically my rectus abdominis, or like you can't really feel the transverse abdominis or the, you know, all these types of things. You just feel like systemic, like, okay, we're running out of whatever we're running out of, but we're running out of that resource. That's kind of how I feel with these uh, pauses at the top. And it kind of makes me think to myself, okay, could I do that with deadlifts? So you deadlift, you deadlift. Instead of resting at the bottom, you hold the bar at the top. Even if you're using straps, this is not a grip strength sell. I'm not trying to sell that. I'm just trying to sell you being loaded 
not through the hands, obviously, I don't want the hands to be the, the, the limiting step here, you are being loaded by this external force and you're just having to fight it. A part of me now is thinking, okay, if you're doing deadlifts like that and you're standing at the top, what muscles need to work really, really hard for you to be resting, right? <laughs> in, in inverted commas, resting. You're not really resting. What, what muscles need to be working really, really hard for you to be at the top of the deadlift and just holding that bar with straps? I reckon the glutes have a lot to say. A lot to say. The traps, obviously the hands, but the glutes. Because if you disengage those glutes, off you go into hip flexion. It's something interesting. It's basically actively making whatever exercise you're doing harder by simply resting at the top, connecting a few of those sets together and going for like a mega set. It's an interesting thing. Um, and it kind of occurred to me because I was like, why am I always going down from like 35 down or 45 down or whatever in push-ups? You start doing 45, 44, 43. Why don't I start from the bottom up? My Lord, did I learn that it was a completely different ball game. I think that's because by the time I get to the set 25, 26, 27, I've already pre-fatigued myself because the first 10 sets are done in one set. So I'm kind of fatigued from that. Um, and the fact that I've been on my hands for so long, I'm pausing at the top. It's like taking that uh, duration under tension, you know, time under tension is, is through the roof. It's just interesting. It's just one way of making things interesting for yourself. Um, and I reckon when I go back to 45 sets down or whatever, 60 sets down, and I'm just banging them out, I'm only going to be benefited by this because it's, it's a completely different stimulus. Like I said, the serratus anterior hasn't been sore now for a little while because I've gotten used to the push-ups. But doing this, I'm like, damn, okay, they're on the map again. It's just so bizarre how if you just change, not change the exercise, but to change how you do it, and where you emphasize the load, how it completely changes the, the stimulus, it changes the, 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 the response from the body. It's just interesting. And it makes me think about the Super Squats book, you know, the whole 20 squat program, why it's so beneficial. It's not, nothing magical about the reps. Obviously, there's a lot of them. It's the fact you're not racking the bar. Because I reckon if you did the Super Squats and you racked the bar for your breaths, you would not be the same. It would not be the same because the time under tension is gone. Appreciate all of you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.